Hello everyone, this is Fluffy Bunny, otherwise known as FWB from Reddit, here for my shoutcast to commemorate the 10 year anniversary of Dota. So, uh, the, this website called thewarcenter.net is where Dota was born, and uh, the message boards were shutting down. So, before they went completely away, I wanted to see how far back I could dig, and I was able to get one of the very first Dota 1 replays from 10 years ago. So, uh, I wanted to see if I could get it running, and it took a lot of work. I had to actually... I still had Warcraft 3 on my computer, but uh, patch switchers don't even go back this far to get this working, so I actually had to find my CD, reinstall the very first version of Warcraft 3, and then find the specific patch, which is here, 1.12, that the tournament was run on, and then I had to go on a treasure hunt to find the exact Dota 1 map that the replay was made for, and uh, two hours later I eventually got it working, but it's probably a lot more hassle than most people want to go through, so I decided to make it into a video just so everyone can see what Dota 1 was like when it was just born. So uh, here's the actual post I found. As you can see, it's from 2003 from the warcenter.net. And uh, these forums are actually archived, at least this part of them were um, not available to the public. The uh, admin Digimagic had to help me get access to these. So without further ado, I'll get into the replay here. Blow the dust off it, and here we go. This is what the loading screen looks like for uh, the custom artwork. So uh, here we are, I'll pause it and uh, just walk you through the map. So uh, starting off here, this is the hero selection area. So to choose your hero back then, you actually would control one of these shades and then move them to a circle to choose your hero. Uh, which you had to be kind of careful because like if you were this blue guy and wanted to choose one of these heroes and just right clicked it he would move and he might hit one of the circles before that and they would choose a hero you didn't want to and uh, there were a, there were certain heroes for each side so the uh, the radiant side I'll just call them the radiant even though they were called the sentinel back then but uh, more people are familiar with the radiant the radiant had this set of heroes to choose from and the Dyer had this set of heroes to choose from. Uh, so I'll just briefly go through each one. Some of them you might recognize. There's actually a couple that are very um, unchanged over the years. Others um, might sound familiar, but they were completely different back then. So here is Stealth Assassin. He was, well, he had his invisibility back then. His ultimate was Death Ward, kind of like Witch Doctors now. Uh, he had landmines and kind of an illusion blink ability. Uh, this guy, Rowan, was uh, a summoner. He doesn't really exist today in any form. Uh, here we have Forest Nymph, who is another summoner. Uh, we have Crystal Maiden, uh, known as Frost Maiden back then. She was pretty similar back then. Um, you'll, you'll see she has the same uh, spells now. Someone just selected her. Here we have Purity's Disciple. Uh, she was basically assumed the role of the healer on the Radiant side. Uh, we have Yurno the Juggernaut. He was eh, fairly similar back then. He didn't have Omni Slash, but he still had Healing Ward and uh, Blade Fury. Here we have Mandavar, Titan of Order. He His ultimate was kind of like uh, Mag's Reverse polar pol Polarity, except it had a range of a thousand, so pretty much the whole screen, but it did not stun. Uh, Sniper was pretty similar back then, only his ultimate uh, was uh, a missile, kind of like Gyro's missile, except you can control it. Uh, here we have Omni. He was actually pretty much the same back then. Very little change. We have Troll Warlord. He was pretty similar. Aqua Soul, otherwise known as Morph now. Uh, kind of similar. Didn't really have the stat change. 
uh, Lunar Moon Thing, otherwise known as Priestess of the Moon now, was completely different back then. Dragon Knight was actually almost identical. We have Earthshaker, he was completely different back then. And uh, Phantom Cancer, I mean Lancer, uh, he was eh, roughly similar. And uh, Flame Lord, another summoner. Uh, so I don't really have time to go through every single one of these heroes and how they were similar or different, um, but I can make another video and actually pick all the heroes and show you if enough people want. Um, but basically, the, the metagame back there, heroes were divided up into different roles. You either had uh, heroes that were known as sieging heroes, whose sole responsibility was to attack towers and destroy buildings. And you had healing heroes whose sole responsibility was to heal. And other than that, you pretty much had summoning heroes. There were a lot of heroes that were based uh, just directly on summoning units, and they had auras to help push. And that was basically it. It was pretty simple. It wasn't really the, uh, the death ball ganking style met metagame that you have now. Uh, there was very little ganking. It was pretty much entirely focused on team fights and pushing. So you'll see as the game goes throughout, there's really not that much ganking. It's just kind of pushing back and forth. And so now I'll walk through the bases real quick. Uh, fountain area, you had your shops down here, and the fountain didn't actually attack. Uh, instead, you had this tower out here, but it was just a regular tower, so you're pretty vulnerable in here if the team ever pushed that far. Uh, here you have the t ancient tree of life with the two uh, super towers. Uh, and that base layout was, you know, kind of similar. You had the tower, two raxes, tower, two raxes. Uh, there was just this other extra tower back here for some reason. And on the dire side, pretty similar. There's a tower and two raxes on the top, middle tower and two raxes, bottom tower and two raxes. And there is your ancient fountain area with the little tower in front. And uh, I'll walk through the lanes right now. Uh, generally the layout's kind of the same, except it was much more closed off. So the lanes didn't really have uh, many ganking areas. Uh, so as I'll walk you through the top lane here, you can see that this is completely closed off at the side. You had one pathway that went uh, to, to the river here, one pathway that went up to the secret shop, just this one pathway not accessible from mid. And as you walk up here, you can see it's completely closed off, doesn't even go into the river. And continuing up here, there's just uh, some paths into the jungle, uh, but the jungle itself, again, completely closed off. You can't get to it from the river or mid at all. It is only accessible from the top lane. Going back here, there's a tier 2 tower area, and the racks. So now I'll go through mid here. Uh, again, fairly closed off. We had a, a shop here. This shop had mostly uh, potions. And as we go here, not a whole lot different in mid. Uh, except the rivers kind of ended right there in the middle, actually. This area right here, you could walk through these trees and get to one of the secret shops. Here we have Fuzzy, otherwise known as Ursa. He used to be a shop back in the day. And back down here, not a whole lot. It's just a, a blocked off river. In the, the Roshan area, we have this guy known as Morbazon. Uh, you didn't attack him or anything, he just stood there. He was actually part of kind of a quest where if you collected certain items and brought them to him, you'd get a special item. Uh, but the really, he was mostly for decoration. And here's another shop in the mid area, uh, another potion shop. So as you can see, really not a lot of ganking. Uh, not a lot of ganking paths, just pretty straightforward lanes. So I'll finish off here with the mid. Uh, so again, the or the bot the bot lane, the creeping area or the the jungle was again completely closed off from mid. You could only get to it from the bot lane. 
And as you can see here, it's completely closed off from the river. And here's the path to the secret shop, just this one path here. And as you can see here, it's still completely closed off from mid. So as you can see, kind of the, the same general layout, but a lot, a lot more closed off with less ganking paths. So now I'll unpause it here and get into the picks. So we can see the, uh, the Radiant, picks Frost Maiden, otherwise known as Crystal Maiden, Forest Nymph, who you'll see as a summoner. We have Luna Moonfang, who's another summoner, and Omni, who's pretty similar. So this, I'll pause it for a second here to talk about their strategy. They picked basically a pushing team um, centered around the summoners, which was um, pretty much one of the, the only Basically, you, back then you had you had two team types, one based around summoning and one around sieging. So there were certain heroes, uh, as you can see, that uh, the, the Dyer picked this guy, he's a siege hero. He's basically, his sole job is just to right-click towers. So their strategy is one uh, based on sieging. So this guy, Manoroth, is going to do all his pushing and they're going to basically be focused on keeping him healed whereas the Radiant is going to be all summon push based and we'll see that as the game develops. Uh, starting items basically you standard was basically just ring of regeneration there wasn't a whole lot of item variety back then there were no recipes you basically had everything you had uh, attack items here, armor items here uh, some regeneration items here and some more specialized items here, but you did not have any recipes. Uh, so as we can see starting off, we have Omni gets two Sobe masks, Troll gets Ring of Regeneration, Crystal Maiden's probably going to go up here to get an item, and the Forest Nymph just has a Ring of Regeneration. And uh, as you can see, they're, they're not even using voice chat, which wasn't built in back then. Uh, people eventually started to use TeamSpeak. And you can see his comment, remember the lag, run early. Back then it was pretty common to have one or two second delays, and that would be completely normal. And you see him here, he calls out render in the team chat. This is because you didn't actually know what the other team's heroes were until you actually saw them. There's no scoreboard or anything. Um, so typically people would call out which heroes were in the lane. So you can see him doing that now. And you also can't, couldn't see what items they'd have. Um, so you see guys start trying to say what items they think the enemy has. So now we're just in the laning phase. The typical lane makeup was two top, two mid, and one bottom, as you can see here. I'll go over the dire lineup. They pick uh, Lashrak Bot, who was actually almost identical back then. He has changed very little. They have the Mage Slayer, who is now called Anti-Mage, but back then I think his name was a lot cooler. Uh, he was pretty similar. He had Mana Burn instead of the attack based. And uh, we have Soul Renderer, who kind of looks like Furion. He has the, the teleport skill, but other than that he's not that simple. He's not that similar. Uh, he's basically the, the he has just has healing skills. And here in the jungle we have Manoroth, who is their siege hero. Uh, basically you'll see him just stack HP and start pushing towers later on. <clears throat> Top lane we have Necro, who is one of the dire summoning heroes. You can see here he's using one of his spells, uh, which basically just resurrects dead units, so every time he uses it, 
uh, you can see the corpses here from the dead huntresses, it just brings those back. Uh, some other interesting things to note here, like I said before, there is no scoreboard. There wasn't even really a, a kill about death counter, so there's no way to keep track of how many kills or deaths you had. Which didn't really matter, because back then it was much more push-based and a lot less focused on hero killing. Some other things to note, our, uh, gold was freely transferable, so it's very typical to uh, transfer gold or even items between teammates. There was no item lock, so you could basically give all your gold or items to one hero, which you can see here, they're transferring gold. Crystal Maiden picked up a Vitality Booster for 300 hit points, a very common build back then. Looks like West Track picked up Boots. See everyone complaining about lag, which was pretty standard back then. Now we can see these two heroes are starting to use their summons more. So uh, Luna here is can summon these little spirits, moon elementals, and she also has a, a true shot aura for that. And the forest nymph summons spiders actually. There were a couple of them up before, you'll see more later. And she has a roar skill as well that you can see she's using here that increases damage. So Manoroth here is still creeping in the jungle. He has a skill which summons these little fell hounds that help him siege. The orange saying keep pooling ASAP. He's basically just telling his teammates to uh, transfer gold. Picked up a void stone, which basically did the same thing as it does today. Maybe you can see the spiders that Horus and Nymph summoned.
So it looks like the dyer's starting to push down top. You see they're wearing down the tower pretty quickly. And there haven't really been any hero kills yet. As you can see it's just pushing against pushing. The main action right now is top with the uh, summons fighting against each other. Other than that, the other lanes are just farming and leveling up. Uh, back then, there were only 10 levels max, so ultimates were only one level, uh, but you also leveled up a lot slower, so at the end of 45 minutes is probably when you'd be reaching level 10. So as you can see, most people are around level 3, level 4, level 4, much slower than today's game. Crystal Maiden in mid here picked up, uh, looks like a Void Stone, a Potion of Mana, and a Potion of Healing. These potions were pretty much in balance back then, they were taken out much later, but that's what you buy in this shop here. <coughs> and they basically just instantly healed you. Like as you can see, this Potion of Healing was only 50 gold, and it heals 250 hit points instantaneously. A potion of Mana gave you 150 mana instantaneously, again for only 50 gold. You can see the troll here picked up a flask of saffron water, which is more like the healing salve of today. It heals 400 HP over 12 seconds, and you get 4 charges. You can see he also just picked up a circlet of nobility from the Ursa shop. Manoroth's still jungling here. He picked up a Helmet of Iron Will. <coughs> Back then, still pretty similar. Added 6 armor, granted regeneration. We have Luna, picked up another Sobi. And here we have Necro, now has 3 Sobi masks and boots. Like Mage Slayer still farming the jungle. He picked up a medallion of concentration, which is kind of like treads. Basically gives you movement speed, uh, agility, and damage. Now back then you couldn't upgrade boots, you just uh, waited to buy them directly. So you can see he didn't buy boots of speed, he just waited till he had enough gold to buy this medallion of concentration, which is basically his boots. See, so just mana burn the troll. You can see the Shrek picked up a Pulsar amulet, which is basically just uh, three Sobe masks combined. Omni still has the two Sobe masks he started with. You can see the bigger spider that Forestniff now summons is a Broodmother. So Broodmother started off as just a little summon. Here you can see Mage Slayer picked up a bunch of health potions. You 
And it looks like they're gathering mid. They'll probably start pushing now. Looks like Omni's picking up a couple potions. So their strategy here is just going to use, uh, they have a push based aura team, so they're going to basically beef up their summons and try to push down the lane as, as far as possible. So you can see they have a bunch of summons up right now, Forest Nymph just used her roar, which gives additional damage in an area of effect. And they'll be able to take this tower fairly easily. Also one thing to note, uh, scroll, teleport scrolls did not exist back then either. And they have no problem taking on the tier 2 tower. So as you can see, I still don't think there's even been one hero kill yet. It's just been all pushing, pushing against pushing. And that was kind of how the, the strategy went back then. It was just your team supporting a push and the other team trying to stop the push. So they're just kind of letting their summons and the creeps do the work, trying to supplement them as much as possible. The screen thing that Troll has is uh, Repel from Omni. The question is asking skipping towers is not allowed, right, for producers, just because uh, their mana off went straight here and started attacking the tower, which there was nothing against that back then. Uh, in fact, you can see that even the Ancient isn't invulnerable. If you wanted to, you can go straight up to it and start attacking it. Uh, but it was just uh, an unofficial tournament rule that, that made that illegal. So Manroth just actually suicided down here while he was pushing the tower, which was pretty typical back then because it was a lot quicker just to absorb all the damage and die, revive, and go push again. That was pretty much the role of the siege hero. And that would also get him back up to his base with full HP to help stop this push. Soul Renderer almost goes down there, but he had a healing potion. see Manoroth came back here. He's actually not going to help defend. He's just going to come straight down and keep sieging this top lane here. That's all his job is, is to kill towers and buildings. So it seems like the, uh, the dire strategy right now is to try to hold back this push as long as possible and kind of bank on Manoroth here to keep pushing this top lane. And Omni just used his Guardian Angel. As you can see back then it gave a whopping 30 armor.
which was still a big help, um, but not nearly as high as it is today. But on the flip side, it also lasted a lot longer. You'll see it stick there for a long, long time. And so that's allowing them to step up here, and they're starting to take down the racks as Manroth up here is, uh, with his summons, taking down their racks. Uh, one thing to note about destroying racks back then is once you destroy them, they completely stop producing units for that lane. So as you can see, they destroyed the melee racks here, so that means no more melee units will spawn or dire in that lane. Which was actually you know, a pretty big deal then, since it was all centered around pushing. They have a lot less pushing power now in mid, and it's also a lot harder to defend. And so now the healer, Soul Renderer, has joined Manoroth down here. So this was a very common pushing strategy to just have your sieging hero here, just right-clicking towers and buildings, while he, you can see, he just got healed. So he's going to repeatedly get healed by the, the Soul Renderer, who looks like he's teleporting back, or at least trying to, while he continues taking down these, and he's just going to suicide here. His ultimate is actually um, Reincarnation, like SK's. And it looks like he picked up a couple belt of giant uh, strength belts here to help him push. And you can see him revive here. His summons are able to take out the last racks. So it looks like he's still just Continuing on to the next tower, this extra tower in front of the fountain, and again he will just suicide it, and it looks like it pulled the entire Radiant team back here to stop him. So the push in mid has subsided, Radiant was able to get the melee racks, and Manoroth on top was able to get both racks and take a little off of this uh, kind of tier 4 tower. So it looks like Radiant is gathering for another push. They will probably continue to push this mid lane, while Manoroth on the dire side will continue to suicide. With occasional help from the healer. Looks like he bought a point booster, which was pretty much the same back then. see in the Radiant base, since they don't have any racks here, that means no units are being respawned into that lane, which means it's just getting constantly pushed. And so these units are going to slowly wear down the base. Now they are resuming their push. These owls you see here are a Luna's ultimate. It's kind of like the, the current Luna's ultimate, very similar. They will focus down this rat. See Necro here got Yuled. Looks like the Forest Nymph has Eel's Skepter of Divinity, which back then was fairly similar, except it had charges, so you could only use it six times. You can see the Guardian Angel gets popped. They're gonna focus down. Towers here, Crystal Maiden's using her ultimate. And Omni goes down. While here, Manoroth is continuing to push down top. He's going to go on to focus the super towers. So they do drop one tower. You can see these tornadoes here are actually Soul Renderer's ult. Uh, basically just spawn three tornadoes, which are kind of like the Wildkin tornadoes in Dota today. 
except they were a lot faster and did a lot more damage. You can see it completely pushes them out. And now he teleports top to help Manor off. He heals him, and he's going to focus down this top tower. You can see actually the Soul Renderer dropped off a belt of giant strength into his inventory. So he will go down. I don't know if he got healed at the last second. But he likely has reincarnation, which didn't have any mana back, any use back then. No, I think he died. Yep, he just died. Probably wasn't on cooldown. So they're gonna try to catch the Soul Render here. They do. And the summon takes down the last of the Super Tower here. So here it's actually pretty much even. Uh, we have the Sentinel has completely lost their top lane and won of their last towers, whereas the Dyer has lost their entire mid lane and one of their last tire towers. So it's actually going to be a very close finish here. Necro here with the units he revived. Now that uh, reincarnation spell he has just revives the highest level units that have died, which happen to be the summons from the radiant side. You can see Force Nymph using her ultimate here. It was Tranquility, which is basically just a uh, Witch Doctor's healing spell, just healed an AoE around her. So it looks like they're getting up and gathering for their last push. So they're probably going to get all their summons ready and try to push down all the way to the end while Manroth will suicide and try to beat them. So it's going to be kind of a race. Soul Renderer pops his ultimate, the Tornadoes, that's going to push them back. Manoroth here is focusing the Ancient now. He's not even worrying about that tower. He's just going to go straight to the Ancient. Uh, like I said before, no buildings have invulnerability. You can uh, kill them in any order you choose. Now that the Tornadoes are gone, they're going to hop back in here. Just going to be this push against Manoroth Suicide. So you can see they're also ignoring the other tower and just going straight for the main. Crystal Maiden uses her ult. All the summons are focusing the main. It's down to half. Manoroth has this main kind of, looks like about a third off of that. He will revive and continuing. Continue to focus it. See right now they're just kind of focused on destroying, destroying the ancient here. And Crystal Maiden goes down, the other heroes are low, Manroth is still pushing uncontested here, he's got it down below half. They pick off the Luna as well. And Troll goes down as well. So the stop has completely pushed, the push has completely stopped. They got this down to the red with a thousand HP left, and Manoroth is continuing to focus the Radiance main. Like they're all gonna come up here to try to help him out. And 
Ami's gonna focus Manroth. They're gonna focus on her to take him out. Looks like they get him just in time. 300 HP left on the main. Someone get destroyed. And man, that was very close. They almost ended it right there. Now it's still very close, it's anyone's game. Looks like Force Nymph is able to get back up here with her summons. She will try to take that out before the dagger can respond. And now it's just turned into a race. They turn back around and it looks like, oh it's going to be close. They just barely get it down. Whereas the Dyers had only 600 HP left. So that is it, a 29 minute game, very typical back then, pushing strategy versus a sieging strategy, just kind of went back and forth, and not a whole lot of hero killing, just pushing. So uh, that's pretty much it, that's how Dota was 10 years ago, this was from one of the very first Dota 1 tournaments in 2003 when Dota 1 was just coming out. And I uh, hope you enjoyed.